I, Apsaras II, officially and unofficially preside in this faith, as the Hidian Proctor at this time when the priesthood of Akka, pronounced Akka, is non-existent upon the face of the earth. Although there may still be followers who hold this book dear to themselves, born Kevin Charles Jackson, I was a quiet child who studied life, people and behaviors while trying to figure out where I fit in, as most of us have. In my elementary school years, my mother put us children in a Catholic school, thinking it would better our education. We would all reject it in time as this racism was too easily felt, and we went to a public school after only one year there. One night as a child, after crying out to the Creator, I found myself in a space where I knew if I asked the Creator a question, then that question would be answered. So at the age of 13 years, I asked the Creator thus, whatever I think about, I want to be able to see it from its foundation, from where it first originated in all directions. From that day forward, my life was changed. I found myself in the love of seeking the Creator. Before this time, I was baptized a Baptist. I was an usher in that church, and later even sung in a Christian church choir. I was not satisfied, and my sole urge was to keep searching, and I eventually abandoned the church altogether. I knew there was something more, and to keep listening to that inner voice that was now guiding me. I became more aware of other religions after my mother and other family members became members of the Bahi faith. After she passed on, my sole urge was to move to Los Angeles, and it is here where my awakening to truth would take place. While working as a movie extra on a movie set, that still small voice told me that I am Q, and like always, I accepted what was being told to me. I became known as Q Jackson after that. About a year or two later, while working on a movie set on Venice Beach, I was taken aback by a man reading a book as he was really into it at every break period. Eventually, my curiousness got me, and before we wrapped the set, I approached him and inquired as to what was he reading that took all of his attention away from the beautiful skim bikini wearing women who were working with us on the set. He replied, the book is called The Gods Must Be Crazy by Zachariah Sitchin. By the mere title of it, I knew that I had to get this book and read it, and I did. That opened the doorway, as what I was reading really captivated me. Mind you, I never really read any book before this, Reading just wasn't my thing then. The next thing I knew, I found myself hanging out in bookstores reading the entire series of his books and more. I felt as though I had already known the things I was reading. I could actually see as if I were there in those times. On another occasion, a woman told me that I sound like the Bible. Curious as to what she meant, I bought a Bible, placed my hands on it and said, let me open this book to what the woman said I sound like. I randomly opened the book and pointed. My finger landed on a proverb. I read the passage and lo and behold, that is how I talk in parables. I then read the entire book and later in life, I even translated revelations. About two years later, while visiting with a friend, my soul urged me to reveal to her my new name, Q, and I proceeded to tell her things of the spiritual nature and more. She invited a friend over one day for me to hear, and this man is the reason I became vegan-minded that very day. She was blown away by the things I told her and she proceeded to book events with me speaking at her place to groups of people. I told her that it had to be kept underground, so to speak, as I knew not to broadcast myself far and wide. Before I knew it, she had put together gatherings of people who would come to listen to me speak for anywhere from four to eight hours at a time, and more than often, they wanted me to keep going. Next, I'm speaking to people in homes all over Los Angeles and surrounding areas for about the next four years. Groups of about 15 to 30 people packed into people's living rooms. Mind you, I was prior to this time a very, very, and I mean very shy individual. The thought of me speaking to a group of people, let alone with content, never ever crossed my mind growing up and was even frightening to me. While at one of these gatherings, a man told me I should go check out the Good Life restaurant in South Central LA, a grassroots place where knowledge is dropped. So I did and found a treasure chest of griots who came through to drop knowledge about things hidden or truths buried by mainstream academia and media. I sat in this place listening for the next three years, absorbing all of this newfound information, listening to people like Dick Gregory, Ashwar Kwasi, Renoko Rashidi, and much more. It was during this time that I received the rest of my name in total as Q Sirius Septipen Rael. My name quickly became known in the streets all over South Central LA and more, as I would eventually start speaking there also. One day I found myself in communion with a Rasta man who informed me after listening to me for a minute that I had to go see the master, something I knew nothing about and was intrigued to learn about, so I did. I would be initiated into the science of the soul meditation called Saint Mat. Now meditation was an integral part of my life. 
That inner voice guided me to bring in the new year of 2000 with my family, on the Hopi reservation in Arizona. So we packed our things and went. My old friend would join us. Once there, we got permission to sleep in our tents on one of the mesas. As nighttime fell, it got cold, but that didn't matter. It is what I was guided to do. During the night, I felt a large animal of some sort come and lay back to back with me. Me inside the tent and it outside the tent. I scanned its energy and knew it was no threat and went to sleep back to back with this animal. Upon awakening, I felt the animal leave. I told my family what had happened, so we opened the tent and where there was no snow before we went to sleep, there was now about a foot of it. We walked around to where the animal would have been and there was a large impression in the snow next to where I was sleeping. I knew the ancestor spirits there had welcomed me. I will come back. While speaking in the Good Life restaurant, amazing things happened during my speakings there, such as Dick Gregory giving me the respect as an elder over the other elders there, though I was no elder age-wise, and presenting me with the eagle's feather he received from a black Indian casino back east where he had just came from. Many things happened there. I started forming spiritual trips to Sedona, Arizona for anyone who wished to come. During one of these many trips, spirit woke me early in the morning and sent me on a journey for what I did not know. Leaving the others behind, I walked into the forest for a long period of time before being told to stop and look down. In front of me in a dried up stream was a stone, a stone that looked out of place compared to the other stones in the area. I immediately knew it was special and started carrying it back towards camp. About halfway there, spirit told me to stop and perform a ceremony with this stone of which I did while being guided as to every step to take before returning to our campsite. It was a deeply spiritual ceremony that left me weak yet full of reverence. Back to LA, from an elder who spoke in the Good Life restaurant, I learned of the importance of growing your own food. As I had already become a vegan, I took to getting my hands dirty, giving me a newfound appreciation for all of nature. I would walk barefoot upon the soil and concrete sidewalks of LA as I felt more connected to the earth. This I did for years. I grew locks halfway down my back and only wore traditional clothing and communing with the Rasta community. One day the saying, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, popped into my thoughts and would not leave and would guide me to a man by the name of Jordan Maxwell. I would visit him and listen to him speak in his office in Encino, California on Ventura Boulevard often. He led me to a man older than him by the name of Richard McDonald, who taught the law from his home as the Order of Melchizedek in the Chatsworth Mountainous area. While sitting in his attendance, he explained the King's English and the Queen's English and their importance in language. He asked for purposes of clarity, for all who were human beings to raise their hands. We all raised our hands. Then he opened up a law dictionary and had someone read its definition. It read, a monster. I knew at that moment that I knew nothing at all. For the next several years I would find and read law dictionaries, the older the better as I was taught, to better understand the words that I was educated to speak. From this knowledge, and so that I may be free in the expounding of my ministry, via my old friend Jordan Maxwell, I would apply for and receive an ecclesiastical ministry credential issued from The Hague, granting me diplomatic immunity in my ministry, which I still hold today. It would be received by the United States Department of State and District of Columbia also. Forward, I eventually found myself attracted to the Moorish Science Temple of America, where I became a member and would later hold a position in its chartered organization. Prior to really understanding from where I descend, I called myself what I was told I was, an African American, which is a misnomer in law as to what the nationality of this earthly vessel also descends. Content in the knowledge that my earthly nationality is that of Moorish American, unfortunate encounters in this organization kept me searching for more. Next, I took the steps in law to make known who I was in my new awareness of my physical self. As law permitted, I put on record my nativity and other related documentation in reference to the living man that I am, as opposed to the corporate fiction created by the state via a birth certificate. During this time also, I learned about a group of Moors that were reforming the Constitutional Republic of our forefathers, who were gathering in Pennsylvania for one of their governmental meetings, and I made the journey to discover more about them. Satisfied in having being accepted into their ranks, I filed the necessary documentations to address my new name and membership into this body. Due to unfortunate events here also, I disassociated myself from them. The head of the movement died from known health issues, and the body slowly died out, though the filings still stand as fact in law. Back to the temple, I learned a lot from the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America, and even authored books relating to its content. The Moors' most ancient distinction, as stated in the Qur Beth, is Amorian, 
though most Moors today don't know this, while back in a new form chartered temple, I would learn about the prophecy of the Nagas, the prophecy of reincarnation, not knowing at that time, I would later fulfill my part of this prophecy exactly when and how it stated that I would. This is where I would receive the title, Genie Ali from the Nagas, and while in this organization, the knowledge of the QR Beth came to me. I read it from beginning to end and knew that these were the words of the Creator, but that inner voice told me to hold tight, stay in the temple until moved otherwise, so I did. During that time, I dictated this information into Word document form, learning to type for the first time. I would later come to realize why I was instructed to sit on it, as it was mingled with the thoughts of others, and that I would come to receive the correct information in due time. During that time, and on that parallel timeline, there was a documentary-style video on YouTube that someone had made about the Hideons, and later someone came out to discredit the QR Beth as a work of his own imagination. I knew this was a disinformation campaign, and did not fall for it, though I knew others would as it was convincing to the unlearned mind, and this came to pass. The QR Beth along with its possessors were nowhere to be found. During this time, I was in a somewhat state of denial that I was the one to which this information was to be brought to the world and the priesthood re-established. As I thought I am not perfect, I have made mistakes, done things I wish I hadn't, just like most people but time would show me the truth. I knew in my being that these words were true, and through meditation I understood why I had to keep them secret. The time was not right. I would be guided to go to South America on a spiritual journey with the aid of a man named Tascara, a galactic Mayan priest. First stop would be in Mexico, in an old town where spirits still dwell, and that made their presence known to me. And then to Chichen Itza for the ceremony of the serpent. There, a local sage would tell me we needed to go to Peru on our spiritual journey. From there we headed to Lima, Peru, and on to Cusco, Peru, and Machu Picchu, amongst other places. The stories I could tell you about the things that happened there could fill a book, and you would be on the edge of your seat. The time had come for me to leave the Moorish Science Temple in LA, and go within for a while. I would be guided to move to a desert to enjoy solitude until nudged by the Creator to do something different. Then about 20 years after first receiving the QR Beth, in January of 2023 I was urged to let this information out, that the time was now. I asked for clarity as to my position in relation to the priesthood, though I felt I already knew, and I was shown that my name being given to me as Q was to be a sign that would show itself to me, as my quest to know whatever I thought about from its beginning would be known as the QR Beth. Okay, I said still trying to doubt myself. But the thought of coincidence could come into the mind of others, so I asked for more proof, the stone for which you were moved to find. Its importance is written in the QR Beth, and it is now in your possession. Wow. Okay, but you know, three times is a charm. Next, I was moved to search for the QR Beth on the internet, although I had already had it in my possession, and there it was, and I received it, the only copy known to still exist that was available for sale. With this, I was satisfied. I could no longer try to doubt myself, though the proof would keep coming. There's so much more I could tell you. And this is why I opened this communication as I being Apsaris II, officially and unofficially. As officially, I have been guided since my youth and shown that I am to sit in this position, yet it has to follow the order in which it was laid out for it to be official in AKA. Therefore, I am now calling on all those who seek to become members of this religion and or its priesthood to make themselves known to me, so that we may resurrect this most ancient and only religion established by the Creator for the salvation of the Hidian people, the knowledgeable people of the Creator. We are first, a thought of the Creator, and second, the people of which our flesh belongs, the sex of which our skin holds. Therefore, let all and anyone who desires to follow the path laid out by the Creator, Aradia, learn the truth of all things, rise and take possession of your birthright. Contrary to what the world and its religions tell you, you are God, as God is everything, all that exists is God. So let God in the highest reign, so that souls may know the truth of all things, and follow the path laid out unto Akka. I am awaiting you. This is not a one-man show. There is still much more for you to learn. Now at this time, when the minds of mankind are confused the most, the word comes back to life to save the chosen, the ones who choose the truth. Behold, the word comes quickly. You are in the time of the new world awakening. The time is now. Ehilam, kingdomofsoul.org.